morning everybody and welcome back to yet another bow review and today it's a very very special one first of all look at this nice sleeve with a band and what do we get is the one and only a very unique I think it exists only once Tatar style bow from Sergei Tolochko via Sarmat Archery look at this the Malta Archery Crimean Tatar laminated bow <laughs> nice <laughs> and this one was a gift from Sergei thank you very much and sorry for mispronouncing your name all the time I'm such a prick so but what can I tell you look at this pretty one it's a set from Samad Archery, the bow builder Sergei Tolochko. It's the Khan, the Malta Archery edition. Krem Tatar, Crimean Tatar. And it's a laminated bow, has a length and strung of 53 inches. Brace height is six and a half, maybe seven. Poundage of this one is 40, 41. The max draw is 31 inches. We have a brace height of six and a half. Sometimes it says seven. Then what can I tell you? What do you get? You get a fast flat string and the normal version has maple, wenge, moon ebony, natural horn and fiberglass and the Malta Archery Edition has some slight different uh, wood combinations, maple, black walnut and something which I can't treat anymore. And the price of this pretty bow is $350. Wow, huh? It looks Handle is solid. Wow. Quite massive sear here. Let's see if it will cause any problems. We have a small, nice string bridge. First, things first. Knock to knock alongside the belly. Because this is what we just want to, I just want to know. 55 inches from knock to knock. The arrow pass is, I guess, 23 millimeters. But I might be wrong. And it's 24. Okay. While we're at it, and people always want to know the length of the string. String length is 50. <laughs> it's too early. Now we're going to string the pretty bow. Let's see how easy it is to string. 41 pounds at 28, and a mixture of 31. So we will end up at 47 pound. Hmm? So stringing of this bow is very easy. Look at this. So this is really easy. And as long as you make sure that the string is on the string bridge, it will self-center. That's always a nice thing. And then the bow is straight. Wow. Check the brace side. Centimeters, I don't know. Six and a quarter. So could be a little more. We have no six and a quarter, but maybe we make it a little longer later. So what do we get? Stiff. Good stiff. Nice one. So pretty. We have two inlays for the arrow passes. Nice leather wrap. We have a serial number, and here this motor archery. Is this really nice? So, wait, wait. We need the weight. Three sixty. Three seventy. Getting better at that, huh? feel solid in the hand now the only thing is the brace head is a little low for me but we leave it for now and then we might adjust it accordingly let's see handle feels really nice Whoa. it's early in the morning i think i need to warm up first so 28 is nice 29 30 31 feels oh, good let's see these arrows of course are a little too long there are 32 inches. Oh, this is loud. You heard that? 
out kick zeros nice away, so I, we might need to adjust the preset. Because this is really a little on the low side then. And it's already measured where the arrow is. We have six and not even a quarter. If I would go now to the deepest part of the belly, then we don't even have six inches. So we need to adjust that now a little. And then we should. Of course, we start with the heavy arrows again. They are 465. And I guess the bow will have 46, 47. So it should be just 10 grain per pound. 31 inch max draw. Oh. It's a loud bow, but it was nice. And I think it needs a few shots. But arrows go. go. Grouping, I mean, so 420 gray. So I don't draw fully yet, you see that. Nice. 340 might be a little too light, but there's no recommendation of arrow weight. Oh, yeah, then you feel it in the handle. Oh, dang. So, 340 is too lightweight, then it's really shaking and vibrating. I adjusted the brace head now, so we have it six and a half inches. There's a little guitar built in. You feel it right now, but I guess it will go away. But on the other side, of course, we have here like pickups on the guitar. You might end up with a little vibration, but other than that, nice. And the sears are quite, I mean, they're here not so wide, but quite deep. So we have here quite some weight on it. Let's try it with Lukas Navalny's thumb ring. Still not so used to it. Me and thumb ring, huh? So this bow needs a few shots. I still don't know what this bow is doing. And it sounds almost like a, the early Kashyx. So a little loud and we have still a little vibration. 28. The thing is, I don't see a lot with the sun in my eyes. 28 is here. 41.6. Oh, you, 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 yes. uh, 47.5 so we have almost six pounds in two inches 31 We give it exactly 50, so it's a little stiffer than I thought. But then we have two and a half inches, uh, two and a half pounds for the last inch, so it's okay, I guess. 28, so string angle looks fine. Yeah, but it's almost there. I guess at 29. Yeah, 30, see, string angle of 60 degrees. So this is how it looks like. I don't have a peg on 31, so we simply simulate it here. But this bow gets really, oh, and you don't want to draw more than 31. So this bow maxes out at 31, but it's a pretty one. Look, first of all, I like the, the cross section of the sears. The knock groove is very deep, very nice, and then you have this nice different color sections here that's really pretty. And you have here a nice string bridge, more hosiery on it. 
and it comes in nice narrow fade out is nice goes until here and here so it's fine inlays here same wood color than the end of the nox but there's no horn reinforcement so they are simply as they are then you have this nice leather hand looks really good and you can see they shot it already <laughs> there's a few scratches but they shot three fingers or left hand they have a nice description so looking wise nice 465 and we have 50 pounds 180 fast for sure 183 and now the ball wants to throw 176 420 grain mosquitoes today huh? 190 but it feels already a little Ooh, 178 I don't want to full draw then when the arrows is too, are too light like with these ones 340 I shoot one oh, 214 so you get good speed out of it but these arrows are way too light so 460 or something that you add nine grain i guess is fine everything lower is meh. So, have a look at the curves. The arrows are obviously a little too long, so I don't mind that. I hold the book completely upright for now. So, until here is fine, and then it gets stiff. So, 31, but then it's done. But it's a nice shoot. It's only even with 460 grain, you still feel it in the hand. String twist and the little katra with the little katra or different grip position of your hand feels a little less. Now I should 400 again because these 400 spine are really too stiff. Let's see if we can compensate with katra or let's try torque first. Torque, I go still to the right. Katra string twist center shot so the arrow is stiffer you need to do a little otherwise the arrow goes way to the right so but you can compensate a little string twist and a little cutter and then the arrow went in the center so you need to work your way up to this bow so it's a little demanding bow so simply doesn't follow any so simply does what it wants so you need to become friends with it all your horse archers out there because this handle is of course really nice for it you don't have this bump like a Turkish bow look at this and how easy peasy this is of course these arrows are now again a little too long and I don't want to full draw because they're too lightweight but you get the point and I shoot the group but it's loud and it kicks quite a bit so it's almost like a little banjo kick <laughs> but if you like the sound like a keshik or the early keshiks are doing it's fine so now look at this with this handle you can get easier to this way because you don't have oops you don't have the bump on the back and last time somebody wrote you will never be accurate without a knocking point and that will be a video very soon the difference between having a knocking point or having no knocking point is the accuracy different or how much is it different when you shoot with a horse bow of course i understand that you need your knocking point when you set everything up you have a shelf and your the olympic feta bow i understand in historical here they mostly had knocking points too but sometimes not and 
I shoot some bows without knocking point in the same accuracy and precision as I shoot the others with a knocking point. But I will do a video. Oh, we are at almost 20 as usual. We go for the left circle. Yeah, you get used to it. it. Takes a few shots. Only quick again what I just explained when the arrow is too stiff. I shoot without cutra, without anything, and I point at the left at this half circle. You see that? Then you see what the arrow is doing. It goes 20, 30 centimeters to the right. I point at the exact same position. But this time I do cutra and string twist a little. Then you see the arrow goes already away to the left, so you can work your way up if you have two stiff arrows. They are forgotten now, 500 spine I think. And have a relatively heavy tip on it, so you get them even weaker. So they're more like 600 than dynamic. See, they go directly there. I would even say that they are a little underspined. But you get there and then you, once you shoot always the same equipment, you adapt. Mosquitoes go away. Seriously. 8 o'clock and it's already and today it's humid and all the mosquitoes woke up already. The Crimean Tatar bow by Sergei Tolochko. And I got them from Sarmat Archery, so Brayside is now fine. This bow is nice and balanced, has nice curves, so it's nothing overly here, so could be a little more, but it's relatively straight here, and then he has gentle curves. Goes here thin, and here the whole part here is already thicker. So you have bending section mostly here, and this is already thicker, so Kasan, Bash is then already really working as a lever, so this is everything fine. The only thing is with... Uh, and you hear it, there's really like a guitar built in, so these string bridges are not helpful in regards of vibration, but of course they're helpful for centering the string on your bow and keep your bow in this way a little more safe. Good. So thank you, Sergey. Bow, string, sleeve. Uh, for this one, yes, I got this documentation too. Remember, I showed you this booklet. I take a photo of it. I have it now, not here. It's somewhere in the box. Bow, string, sleeve, and documentation are bow, string, sleeve, documentation. Six points. Handling of this bow. So this bow was very easy to string, and with these nice string bridges the bow is straight and the bow is relatively stiff so it's easy it's not a big thing so handling of this bow 10. the build it's a very good looking bow has everything you could ask for a nice leather handle which dampens already your vibration a little but in, for my taste not enough you have description on it that's nice so you know what you have to deal with it's a really sleek nice looking bow my personal opinion the sears are a little too massive so they might add a little weight which causes again in conjunction with the string bridges a little vibration might go away over time but for now we still have it but for the build i give it 10 the basic feel so this bow doesn't wiggle handle is just nice so this fits you can do all your grip styles you wanna wanna have. Works nice and this bow is balanced, feels just you you really have a good solid grip on it with this leather it works just fine. So whatever you do, this bow does it for you. Ah, mosquito. Basic field 10, draw experience. 28, 29, 30, 31. So, as you saw, 
we have from 41.6 to 47.5 from 32 uh, from 28 to 30 inches we go up 5.9 pounds almost three pounds per inch which is quite something but then from 30 to 31 we go down to two and a half so from 2.95 to two and a half pounds per inch so it's it's okay we leave it like this draw experience on the other side they say the boat does 31 and the boat does 31 you get there so directly out of the box and i guess this boat will get a little more smooth over time so 10 for this one shooting experience And it's this, it's this not so healthy feeling. So it's really like it's tension and it vibrates still and still vibrating. So you have a lot going on. I hope it will go away, but for now, and then you feel it even in the handle and everywhere. So a little bit too much for me and you can hear it. It's this metallic sound. So for this, I give you an 8. Then we have 48, 54, right? Price value $350 for a Crimean Tatar laminated bow. It's okay, so it's not that it's a bargain and it's not expensive so for what you get of course you have then shipping and customs and stuff i don't know so you get other nice bows they behave the same for a little less in a very good quality so for this i would give it a four another five it's for what it is compared to the competition it's a little bit on the expensive side so $300 I would say fine then this bow works $350 there are other options out then you simply really need to like this one with all the features and bells and whistles it has and now this pyro is making everything dirty then it's fine then go for it so I mean it's by no means a bad bow it's a really really nice bow but price wise i think it's a bit on on the higher end for what it is 300 euros i would say totally fine 350 then plus shipping plus customs gets gets in a range of which would be then for me a little too much but on the other side this one you can't buy it's mine <laughs> maybe i do a giveaway of this motor actually but who wants to have it so that's all I have. So Sergei, thank you very much for building this bow and giving this bow as a present for me. Thank you very much. I am very honored and I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. <laughs>